He says, the word number four, I thirst. You see, earlier in the crucifixion process, Christ was offered a sponge full of vinegar mangled with hyssop. Now, what that was, it was a sedative. If he had drank that vinegar and hyssop, it was basically a wine. It would have removed the pain and dulled the senses to the point where he could deal with the crucifixion better. Now, earlier in the crucifixion, when they put the sponge to his mouth, he refused it because it wasn't time for him to release himself from the pain. He had to endure it. He needed to endure it. He wanted to endure it. But now, things were coming close to an end. Now it was time for him to prepare himself to give up the ghost. He took a drink from the sponge. This is in John chapter 19, verse 28. If you read further in John, it will jump down to the, uh, the, what we are calling the sixth word. But there's a fifth statement in there, which is found in Luke chapter 23, verses, uh, verse 43. This is the conversation that he has with the thief on the cross. He looks over to the man and he says, Truly, ye shall be with me today in paradise. You see, that thief recognized that Jesus was the Son of God. He recognized that Jesus had redemptive power. He recognized that in Christ was salvation. And the other thief on the other side was mocking him. If you are the king, if you are the savior, bid yourself come down from this cross. He was mocking him, flapping his arms at him. And the other thief said, hey, don't you recognize? Your salvation is right here. He says, Father, Rabbi, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you shall be with me in paradise. See, that scripture opens up a big can of worms because that thief had no baptism. That thief, that thief had no indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That thief had no gifts of the Spirit, but that moment of acceptance of Jesus' salvation and redemptive power, he was granted access into paradise. Now, here is something significant. Even though he was saved, he still had to deal with the consequences of his actions, which was his death on the cross also. So now, the redemptive work of Christ is coming to an end. The, 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 the sacrifice of Christ, if you will, is coming to an end. And he hangs there and he's, he, he, he hangs there and he's, he's looking up into the heavens and he belts out these words, it is finished. A lot of thought and speculation has been going into what he's talking about. I like to deal with that it part of it. It. What is the it that Jesus is talking about? Well, you see, prior to his sacrifice, uh, the children of Israel had to sacrifice lambs in order to cleanse their sins. There was all sorts of feasts and suppers and, and different sacrifices that had to be made in order for them to be right with God. But now, all of that was finished. Now, if you understand the part of speech that the word it is, you recognize that that part of speech is a pronoun. A pronoun takes the place of a noun so that you don't have to say all of those nouns over and over and over and over and over again. And it puts you in a position where you can, con you can consolidate a whole bunch of stuff into one word, it. You don't need to sacrifice goats and, and, and sheep anymore, it. You don't need to follow different things that you have been uh, called to follow, it. You don't need to sacrifice any sheep anymore, it. You don't need to do any of that because it is finished. Now, YouTube and whoever else is looking, I need you to ask yourself this question. What is your it right now? What is the it in your life that's dealing you to the point where you can't get past it? What's holding you? What has you in prison? What's got you captivated to the point that you can't concentrate on God? I need you to recognize that Jesus has put himself in a position so that you could be saved and not only has he put himself in a position for you to be saved 
slave, but he put himself in a position to provide you with the tools to break the curses that the devil has placed in your life. So whatever your it is, I need you to look at that thing and say to it, it is finished. I don't know what it is. It could be your job giving you trouble. Say it is finished. It, it could be your children giving you trouble. Say it is finished. It could be your spouse giving you trouble. You could say that situation, it is finished. It could be your health. It could be your joy. It could be your peace. You need to look at whatever's going on in your life that's keeping you separated from God and say to it, it is finished. For I heard the word of God say, I shall let nothing separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to break me loose because whatever you are, if you're trying to stop me from getting closer to God, I command to you just like my Savior commanded to me on Calvary's cross, it is finished. You have no hold on me. You have no chains on me. You have no binds on me. You are cast out into a dirt, dark place because it is finished finish. I command you to loose your hold on me. I demand you to loose your hold on my life. My salvation is not tied up in you. My motivation is not tied up in you. My preparation is not tied up in you. It is finish. I move you out of my life. I loose you out of my home. I command you out of my situation because it is finished. You are no longer welcome here. You are no longer have authority over me because I demand freedom right now in the name of Jesus and Calvary's cross. The history of this cross compels you to move yourself out of my life. It is finished. And then he moves himself to word number seven. Luke chapter 23, verses 46. He says, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He bows his head and he gives up the ghost. Beloved, I need you to understand that after this work, after Jesus has done what he has done for you and for I, he has given us the ability to commit it all into the hands of God. He's given us the ability to lay it all in his hands. Now, I don't know what you are dealing with right now, but I know for a fact, believe me when I tell you this, this is something that I know, not something that I have been told or read or heard. This is something that I have experienced myself. When you lay it all in the hands of God, all to him you owe, sin has left a crimson stain, but Jesus has washed you white as snow. I don't care what you're dealing with right now, whatever you're facing, whatever your, your, your problems are, whatever your situation is, I need you to understand that all you have to do is lay hold to it and put it in the hands of God and let God deal with it. You see, all you have to do is hold your peace and God will fight your battles. All you got to do is just be patient and let the Lord deal with it. Let the Lord work it. Let the Lord have it because he has the ultimate say so. He has the final authority. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He has say so over everything that is. And if everything that is is under his command and you lay hold to it and put it in his hands, he has control over it. So your, your boss may have some power, but God has has all power. Your children may have some power, but God has all power. Everything around you might have some power, but God has all power. And I want you to start looking around yourself right now and see what's been holding you. See what's been binding you. See what's been trying to pull you down. And I want you to take that thing and lay it in God's hands and say, God, unto you I commit my whatever it is. Unto you, I commit this. I commit that. And I want you, God, to handle it because I can't make it alone. I can't handle it by myself. I can't do this alone because I am a rag, filthy, dirty from all of the things that this world has done to me. But I need to lay it in your hands that you may wash me and clean me up and make me whiter than snow. Now, I don't know if it's your self-esteem or, or your inability to feel love or give love or forgive somebody. But whatever that thing is that's holding you, that has you in a prison, I need you to commit that to God and let God 
have his way. The seven last sayings of Christ should be something that blesses you. It should be something that empowers you. It should be something that sets you free. Because that's what his blood and his sacrifice did. It set you free. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blood from his sacrifice be with you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen.